It's the latest news in tech. Foldable phones coming soon. The future is here. And all I can think is, sheesh, I had a foldable phone back in the early 2000s. Yeah, the thing folded in half and flipped open with a flick of your thumb. Wait, are we going back in time? The familiar old flip phones, for anyone not old enough to remember, usually had a screen on one side and a keypad on the other connected by a small hinge. The clamshell design, ah, takes me back. But nowadays, we need bigger and bigger screens. We're now working and studying from our phones, watching movies and shows, multitasking with split-screen features, watching a YouTube video on one side, chat on social media on the other. So no, the future will be nothing like the past. It'll be all about a big, long, bendable screen. Just picture it. You're watching a video on your phone as you do the dishes or watch the dog. You come into the living room, sit on the sofa, but no need to switch to TV. You can just unfold your phone into a big tablet. But then it's time for work or school, so you just roll your phone around your wrist like a bracelet and run out the door. Or walk. That'll be a reality sooner than you think, because foldable screens already exist thanks to OLED display technology. Old devices and some modern ones use LCD displays. LCD works by laying millions of colored dots, also known as pixels, in front of a backlight. If your phone has this type and you really look into the screen, you can sometimes see them. Or you may have noticed it on old broken phones. When the backlight breaks, you can still see the picture, but it's barely visible. But when the pixels break, all you get is a big pile of nothingness on your phone but the backlight still shines. These fancy organic light-emitting diode displays, or OLED, also have millions of colored pixels. But they're tiny, so even if you try with all your might to see them on your new laptop or phone screen, you won't be able to. And with these ones, every dot makes its own light. This technology is more battery-consuming, but it creates a much better, more vivid color. Save space, too, since there's no need for a backlight. And when printed on a thin layer of plastic, you can do a lot of cool things. You can shape it or, you guessed it, bend it. OLED displays have been used in a lot of products you might even have in your house right now. It allows the newest monitors and TVs to have a curved shape, and some of the latest smartphones have bent screens. So why don't we have foldable phones available to us already? Well, the first problem manufacturers face is how to make a foldable screen that's consumer-friendly. We've got used to having durable but very unbendable glass-protected touchscreens on most of our smartphones and tablets. With foldable displays made out of plastics, people will be touching the screen itself to interact with it, not the glass protecting the touchscreen. Remember early gadgets with plastic screens? Yeah, they get all scratched up after constant usage and being stuck in our pockets. Now imagine what would happen to your smartphone screen if it was made out of plastic. And good luck finding a bendable screen protector. But even if we can figure out how to bend the screen, smartphones have other components. As you can imagine, batteries and chips aren't very bendable. Power supplies and lithium-ion batteries can even catch on fire if flexed too much. Almost everything in the modern phone is made from aluminum and plastic that, yes, can be bent, but eventually will snap and break apart. So, just to make the phone physically bendable, the whole manufacturing process has to be revolutionized. Every small detail, from the screen and battery to the case and outer protection, has to be redesigned. As well as revolutionizing the materials, smartphone manufacturers will have to redesign some of the components. Large OLED screens or more than one display will need so much more energy than modern smartphone batteries can create. Battery capacity is advancing with every passing year, but it's still not enough. I'm already running out of juice after watching just a few YouTube videos. Just imagine having to recharge your foldable phone every 4-5 to hours. Hardware aside, the software will also have to be almost entirely redone. Current operating systems like iOS or Android are made to work on either a smartphone or a tablet. But for a foldable smartphone, the system will have to be able to do both and quickly switch between phone and tablet mode. 
All the apps and the operating system will have to adapt to the changing screen size. That also means a lot more processing power. Right now, the best solution seems to be the Android OS, since it's already been made to work on many devices with a variety of sizes. But this isn't only a problem for the operating system, but for app developers as well. For example, streaming services like Netflix will have to figure out how to stretch or resize videos for every screen size. And it's not the same as putting your phone vertically or horizontally. With a foldable phone, you'll be able to customize the size of the screen as you like, with infinite possibilities. Sounds cool, but it's a lot of work changing everything to fit that. And the main problem of why we don't see many consumer-ready foldable phones on the market already is the price of manufacturing. Just imagine how much companies will have to change their production process. If every single part of the phone has to be changed, well, that means completely new materials, methods, machines. Woo! That can explain why most tech companies aren't jumping headfirst into the mass production of foldable phones. But with more progress every day, it'll eventually become cheaper to produce them. So will we ever see foldable phones? Sure, you can already buy them. Not exactly the futuristic bracelet kind, but there are simple clamshell foldable devices. It's almost exactly like those old flip phones, but both panels are screens with bright displays. The only problem is the hinge. To protect the phone and make it more durable, hinges were made too strong, so you can't exactly open it with the flick of a finger. And after a mechanical test, even these durable hinges broke after 27,000 openings. For an everyday item, that's not a lot. Some other new devices recently presented to the public look more like a glimpse into the future. A long tablet-like display that can be folded into the size of a regular smartphone. Sadly, the newest designs are still clanky and sometimes too thick, making them less interesting for a regular user. Plus, most of the modern foldable phones have one big glaring flaw – a crease in the middle where the screen folds. Not a big problem but it's not very enjoyable compared to the seamless large screens of regular modern smartphones. In addition to all these mechanical problems, there's the issue of cost. Most of these currently available foldable phones start at $1,000 and can go as high as $3,000. Mm, that's not a price most phone users are ready to pay. Despite the problems I've mentioned, the design and production of new foldable phones is still going on. There was a tech demo that presented a new design for a phone, one that actually wraps around a person's wrist like a bracelet or watch. And Apple has recently gotten a patent for a phone that can roll up like a scroll. Some people say the future is in foldable laptops, not smartphones. The ability to watch a movie and then roll your laptop up into a thin tube that hardly takes up any space in your bag? Huh, just take my money already. I'm in.